गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू गना शॉर्ट गना शॉर्ट में आप सबका स्वागत है आज हम अफगानिस्तान के बारे में और जानकारी हासिल करेंगे और ये जानकारी हासिल करेंगे अफगानिस्तान थ्रू एन इंडियन प्रिज्म एक इनसाइडर का स्टोरी और ये इनसाइडर है मिस्टर समीर बसीन जो मेरे साथ अभी जुड़े हुए हैं वेलकम समीर वेलकम टू द शो इट्स अ ग्रेट थैंक टू हैव यू ऑन गना शॉट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम थैंक यू सर ओके मैं सबको बताना चाहता हूँ समथिंग अबाउट समीर समीर इज ऑफकोर्स इन इंडियन ही स्टेज इन डेली बट ये इनका जान पहचान अफगानिस्तान के साथ बहुत है इनका नाता है अफगानिस्तान के साथ ये लोगों को जानते हैं वहां ये रह चुके हैं वहां यहाँ बिजनेस कर चुके हैं उनके पॉलिटिकल uh, एंटिटीज के साथ uh, काम कर चुके हैं चाहे वो तालिबान हो या नॉर्थ अलायंस हो या और तरीके उन्होंने इंटरनेशनल तौर पर अमेरिकन uh, फ्रेंच वगैरह के साथ भी नाता है इनका और ये ट्रैक टू डायलॉग में भी कभी कभी शरीक हुए हैं राइट right. मेरे ख्याल में यू uh, नो you know, जब भी हम किसी देश के साथ बात करना चाहते हैं किसी स्थिति के साथ बात करना चाहते हैं वहां का ऑन ग्राउंड जमीनी हालत क्या है उसके बारे में सही जानकारी हासिल करना इम्पोर्टेंट है ना कि हम सोचते ना हमारा सोच है कि क्या होगा वहां सो द ग्राउंड ऑन ग्राउंड एक्सपीरियंस इज इम्पोर्टेंट नंबर एक नंबर दो अफगानिस्तान और अफगानिस्तान का स्थिति बदल रहा है और बहुत तेजी से बदल रहा है और हमें ये पहचान होना चाहिए दो चीज मैं बताना चाहता हूँ किस तरीके से बदल गया है अफगानिस्तान दो साल ढाई साल पहले हम सोच रहे थे कि भाई अफगानिस्तान में बर्बादी ही बर्बादी होगा सब कुछ लुट जाएगा पाकिस्तान हावी हो जाएगा चाइना हावी हो जाएगा उधर चाइना वहां से खान बनाएंगे और मेटल्स ले जाएंगे वगैरह वगैरह वहां कुछ नहीं हुआ वो सब उल्टा क्या हो रहा है आज के दिन अखबार में जो निकला है वो ये है बदरुद्दीन हकानी जो जलालुद्दीन हकानी के बेटे हैं वो जो दोहा में एनवॉय हैं उनको बुलाया जा रहा है एज हमारा गणतंत्र दिवस का चीफ गेस्ट और अदर गेस्ट बाय और एम्बेसी इन दोहा ठीक ये दो साल पहले ढाई साल पहले हम सोच भी नहीं सकते थे तो बदलाव है दे रियलिटी विच इज टेकिंग प्लेस सेकेंड अगर आप देखोगे हम सब सोचते हैं अफगानिस्तान के अंदर पैसा नहीं है ये है वो है नहीं पर आज के दिन अफगानिस्तान का जो अफगानी है इट इज मोर स्टेबल द रूपी और तीसरी बात जो मैं बहुत बार बता चुका हूं मणिपुर के सिलसिले में कि अफगानिस्तान में क्या है ड्रग्स यानी ओपीएम की प्रोडक्शन खत्म हो गया है इसीलिए म्यांमार में प्रॉब्लम शुरू हो गया जो मैं हर वक्त बताता रहता हूं और ये जो बंद होना ये मेरे ख्याल में बहुत बड़ा उपलब्धि है अफगानिस्तान के लिए और ये हुआ तालिबान 2.0 पॉइंट जीरो के माध्यम से ये कभी सोच नहीं सकते थे 20 साल यूएसए अफगानिस्तान में रहा वो कुछ कर नहीं पाए तो बदलाव है इसीलिए मैंने सोचा आ, समीर बसीन को बुलाऊ और वो अपना दिल से बात करें आपके साथ कि अफगानिस्तान में क्या हो रहा है इकोनॉमिकली सोशली और सिक्योरिटी वाइज तालिबान वन क्या था तालिबान टू क्या था इसका थोड़ा हिस्ट्री थोड़ा फ्यूचर इंडिया के साथ कैसा नाता होगा चाइना के साथ कैसा चल रहा है और रीजनल एक्टर्स के साथ कैसे चल रहा है समीर ओवर टू यू यू कैन स्पीक इन इंग्लिश यू कैन स्पीक इन हिंदी एनी लैंग्वेज इट डजेंट मैटर एनी अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम जस्ट टेक ऑफ thank you very much sir thank you for the opportunity i actually i'm also one of your followers and fans and uh, and exchange thoughts with you and follow your blog so uh, thank you for this opportunity i have had a long association with afghanistan my first interaction with afghans was in moscow in uh, after the collapse of the soviet union for business and uh, Uh, so i had uh, an interaction with the afghan diaspora in russia and in the us uh, post 911 i got an opportunity to go to the uh, afghanistan in uh, august of uh, roughly a year after 911 uh, august of 2002 uh, 
uh, I had besides my businesses there, I had a very popular restaurant uh, called Anar, and uh, I had I was also appointed the GSA, which is the franchise holder of Indian Airlines, and subsequently, which was merged with Air India in 2005. I also got involved with the uh, you know with the uh, uh, the efforts uh, made by the international community to promote privatization and investments in Afghanistan at the highest level. I actually traveled with uh, President Karzai as part of the state visit, uh, heading the Afghan business delegation to India. And I coordinated that delegation and brought it to India. On the political side, uh, you know, because in Afghanistan, we understand, you know, it was going through a phase where uh, 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 it was finding its feedback and transitioning from a, uh, from a, a, a turmoilish period to a uh, to a more st phase of stabilization and institution building. So I also got involved at different levels on uh, with the politics and uh, in there as it was more on the economic agenda, but then you know it's it's all mixed up. Yeah. So uh, I will, for our viewers, I will start with, uh, you know, I'll quickly give you a thing on uh, for, you know, some people to give them a background that Afghanistan broadly is uh, what I call in its, uh, uh, you know, it's part of the great game continuing, you know. So we all know about the great game one and, uh, you know, uh, uh, which was the British era. That's the way I divide up the history of Afghanistan. And great game two started with the Russian invasion. And uh, uh, great game three start, uh, started after 9-11. After the withdrawal of India, this is a part of phase two of the Great Game Three, where the U.S. still has an intervention because it signed a deal with the Taliban, and uh, uh, it still is in, in in close communication. Although we all know that there is no formal recognition of Taliban, but uh, if you if you if you followed the Doha uh, talks closely, Ambassador Khalilzad, who led the talks, actually. Uh, uh, involved all the uh, major players, including India, and kept them informed on the on the political process with the Afghanistan. And the, as we know that the the Afghan Taliban started while they were in Doha visiting, except for India, they visited Pakistan, of course, uh, China, Russia, and and they uh, communicated with the Americans through Doha. Although uh, uh, on the signing of the deal. Uh, Trump made uh, little faux pas that he he wanted to take credit for the deal and he you know didn't realize that he uh, asked for the signing the deal to be done at Camp David without realizing that you know you you were uh, calling the people or who had actually uh, were not directly involved in 9/11 but had given shelter to the main perpetrator of 9/11 Osama bin Laden. So their association with Al Qaeda would, you know, not be easy to explain. Uh, 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 so we post 9/11 quickly Afghanistan went through a phase where uh, the Americans first, as we know, took over Kabul in a very short period. They ousted the Afghanistan in practically a month. They entered through the north, and they were in Kabul by November December of 2001. President Karzai, as we know, was uh, uh, in late 2001 at Bonn. Uh, uh, appointed the transitional leader and uh, subsequently in 2002 he was appointed as the transitional head of the government. His first election took place in 2004 uh, where he got uh, 50 percent, 55, I think 55 percent of the vote and uh, Kanuni who's, who represented the Northern Alliance got about 16 percent. Uh, his reign, uh, President Karzai's reign, uh, uh, you know, uh, Although the Americans wanted to Afghanistan to move or the West and including us wanted a democratic model, but knowing the old uh, uh, cultural politic, I would I call the political culture of Afghanistan with the with the tribals, etc. Uh, it was difficult to you know to sort of fast track democracy and establish confidence in a democratic setup, you know, where people would not know where they stand. As you know, Afghanistan has a uh, has a uh, has conventionally got what is called a loya jirga, which is like a map in in Indian context. You know, so you know there are a few thousand people uh, who 
uh, who aggregate in Kabul and and uh, discuss different uh, issues uh, facing the country and you know come to a consensus on the way forward. So President Karzai, you know, uh, knowing this was a mixed bag and you know he did not really pursue institution building while managing these contradictions and there was large scale reporting of corruption and nepotism. Uh, his second phase uh, started in 2009, where he, uh, he uh, president, uh, former President Ghani and Dr. Abdullah stood against him. And then uh, as uh, there was still, a, as one of the US uh, diplomats said, the winner doesn't take all. But there was a, sort of a compromise reached by the US. And, uh, and uh, President uh, Karzai was appointed as again as the uh, president. Uh, in the meantime, on the security, this is the political side up to uh, President Karzai. In the meantime, the U.S. basically, uh, although went into Afghanistan uh, and uh, very soon declared that their major combat operations are over in early 2002, uh, but uh, the Taliban started reorganizing themselves uh, uh, in around two th early 2002 and uh, as under Mullah Omar. Who was the uh, the key founder of uh, Afghanistan of uh, Taliban in 1994, and took over uh, Kabul in 96, and reigned most of uh, the territory of Afghanistan till 2001, uh, just till 9/11. So uh, just before, as we all know, before 9/11, uh, MHR Masood was uh, the was actually coincidentally, but a little strangely. Uh, killed two days before 9/11, uh, and uh, by purportedly Al Qaeda uh, act, uh, actors. Uh, so, on the security side, uh, the U.S. campaign went through uh, three three administrations: two uh, under uh, first uh, George Bush Jr., then uh, Obama, and then Trump. Okay, so and then finally withdrew. The fan withdrawal process was initiated by Trump with the peace deal, but was uh, concluded by Biden. Uh, we all have seen those pictures of uh, the Americans leaving uh, Afghanistan, which actually uh, are uh, very distressing pictures because it it was a lot of chaos. Uh, and uh, interestingly, the American uh, 82nd Airborne Division landed in Kabul just. So, which is again a strange coincidence on 14th of August, and and Taliban walked into to conduct the evacuation a day before the Taliban walked into, but that was precipitated per, per, uh, by President Ghani leaving, and in fact the U.S. general who was in charge of uh, uh, the 82nd Airborne, at the, which was primarily uh, assigned to secure the perimeter of the Kabul airport on the military side and conduct the evacuation process. Uh, they, 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 they could not take everyone, but they took about 6,000 U.S. nationals and 122,000 Afghans who had worked, who were closely associated with Afghanistan, whether civilian or military, uh, military personnel. And most of them were um, taken out to different uh, areas and then from there uh, there were processes of visas that were processed and then after security clearances moved to to the US the taliban as we know uh, walked in on august 15th which was seen in india as a you know as a as a snub from pakistan uh, because it was the indian independence day and uh, we saw those uh, images of uh, uh, the previous isi chief uh, having tea with Taliban in the Serena Hotel, which was, you know, widely covered by the Indian uh, media. Uh, but and then everyone comes because of the view that uh, the Pakistan has basically achieved its objective of what we used to call strategic depth in, in, in Afghanistan. And the US has left Afghanistan and handed it over to Pakistan. And I was constantly of the view that that was not the real, uh, real picture. Because you have to understand that the Taliban, if you take the example of Mullah brother, he was um, yeah, he was uh, arrested in 2010 by a joint uh, CIA team uh, uh, from in Karachi. 
and he was uh, uh, he was imprisoned for eight years and released only in 2018 when the Doha process was gathering steam and he was then made the uh, the the chief of uh, chief negotiator for uh, on behalf of the Taliban who was the counterpart to Ambassador Khalilza, who was appointed as the special representative uh, for the talks by Trump uh, 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 as the special negotiator for uh, for the peace process, for the US withdrawal process. So there were two parts to that deal. One was the withdrawal of, which is the primary, uh, primary objective, withdrawal of the US forces from Afghanistan, safe withdrawal. As we all know that, uh, you know, we saw it, what happened with the Brits and the Russians in the past. Everyone is concerned that, you know, that the enemy would not shoot them in the back. As you're an army man, you would understand when you are, you know, withdrawing forces, you need to protect your backside. So uh, they they basically moved troops. They started a process of moving troops from forward bases uh, into uh, major, uh, uh, bigger ba uh, forward operational posts to bigger bases and to large population centers. And uh, as we know that uh, uh, although uh, the deal was signed on February 20th, uh, sorry, 29th February 2020, when COVID was just uh, engulfing the world in Qatar, um, and uh, and uh, Biden uh, decided to you know stick to the deal and continue the draw. Uh, Trump had agreed to a May deadline of May of 2000. Uh, uh, 21, but Trump uh, asked initially asked for an extension of till September of 21. Uh, uh, as we know that uh, major U.S. forces actually departed just before July 4th, 2002. We know that Bagram, uh, which was the biggest base in Afghanistan, which was actually built by the Russians, and then it was the largest base for the U.S. forces in Afghanistan, just north of Kabul. Uh, was uh, evacuated on Ju July 2nd, 2021. And uh, post that, the as I said, August 14th, uh, Major uh, General Chris Donahue, uh, the commander of the US Army 82nd Airborne Division, uh, completed the uh, evacuation mission on August 30th before the 20th anniversary of 9-11. So Americans followed their landline to, uh, which appealed to political statements to their domestic audience. Now coming to Afghanistan, uh, the current situation in Afghanistan is that uh, post August 15th, uh, uh, there has been complete uh, cessation of violence. There is country's whole uh, security system has improved, and uh, civilian casualties are have declined. Uh, uh, considerably, although there there are still some attacks which are conducted by ISKP, which is sort of I wouldn't say a, right now uh, concern for see uh, there's a rivalry between ISKP and uh, and the Taliban because the Taliban follow a uh, Hanafi uh, Deobandi Hanafi school of uh, Islam, whereas the uh, ISKP, which is uh, you know the originate from IS, ISIS follows which uh, uh, starting roots in Afghanistan way back in 2014 and interestingly on the eastern border of Afghanistan in area called Langara uh, you know where for reference of people which is Jalalabad area which is closer to Peshawar so even the Amrullah Saleh the then NDS chief used to uh, and then subsequently vice president used to remark that how come ISIS is landing on the eastern side of the border, uh, crossing all over uh, all over Iran, which is which is you know completely anti-ISIS and Shia, because ISIS is as you know is a Sunni uh, follow Sunni form of Islam. So uh, security situation by and large is peaceful. Uh, the IDPs which had uh, internally displaced people because of uh, U.S. forces drawing, you know, moving into the main bases uh, left. Uh, although Taliban, there are different estimates, governed and ruled uh, and run there uh, uh, till the collapse of the government, anywhere between 30 to 50 percent territory and contested the rest. But the IDP basically moved into large cities like Kabul, uh, 
during the US withdrawal uh, process. And most of them have now returned and uh, pieces returned, uh, uh, means in a large part. Uh, um, uh, besides that, uh, uh, as far as the uh, uh, so, uh, economic situation is concerned, I used to always call Afghanistan the drug and donation economy, which was a major, uh, major sources of revenue. So, as you know, that uh, as you rightly said in your introduction, that Afghanistan, and that's also an interesting statistic because US went in there with all its, uh, you know, DEA operating there on the ground and the UN uh, drug in, uh, uh, control, UN ODC, et cetera, operating there. They actually, the area under cultivation, because when they, interestingly, when they took over uh, Kabul and throughout the Afghanistan, the drug uh, st uh, production in Afghanistan was 300 tons. And the US left, it was 6,000 tons. So it grew 20 times. And this is a strange phenomenon to explain that, you know, with all the uh, operations for controlling drug and eradicating, it actually grew exponentially. So I will not try to, you know, go further into that, but that's the reality. As far as the economy is concerned, it has although shrunk largely because I said as it's, it's a drug and donation economy, uh, estimates are it's, it's shrunk by 30 percent there are close to 1 million people who have lost their jobs uh, 75 to 90 percent of the uh, population uh, is, uh, is suffering uh, from some form of food insecurity uh, although the UN and with the World Food Program is uh, provides uh, uh, the population, 25% of population with food aid and uh, cash handouts. But it's not enough. Uh, as far as the, the revenue for the IEA is concerned, this is another interesting uh, fa uh, fact. That the US used to, uh, the Afghan budget at the time of the previous, uh, under the US, uh, US presence was about 6 billion. And the target for 4 billion was provided by the US, but 2 billion was to be is the target for the Afghan government to generate uh, revenue, revenue uh, by the government itself. Uh, with all the US consultants and all the you know support, they were not unable to achieve it. And the large reason for that was corruption. And the Taliban, interestingly, have achieved that you know, without any of the consultants or any support from the US. Uh, and it is pri primarily because they have clamped down hard on corruption. And, uh, you know, internal trade has, uh, and it has reduced the cost of operating because, you know, corruption and unlawful, which I call a lot of borders had unlawful tax collection, as we know, as, you know, the uh, border areas were basically let out to local warlords, which, uh, you know, were uh, collecting running their own sort of uh, uh, fiefdom and collecting revenues on on the borders besides that the us is uh, on the economic side is there are different reports they don't they want to not be seen as doing it they they're, you know, they're uh, providing 40 to 80 million dollars per week to the current administration taliban with uh, of, of the which I call taliban or iea uh, which basically shores up the Afghan currency, which is actually stronger than the rupee now, and of course, much stronger than the Pakistani currency. And uh, uh, in fact, I was in Dubai recently, and uh, the, I, there are Pasht a lot of Pashtun drivers who come from the KPK area, so bordering uh, from Waziristan, etc. So I always talk to them when I take a ride in the cab. So. I, although I don't speak Pashto, I speak a little bit of Dari, understand Dari almost completely. So I was talking to them about the situation. So he said that, you know, peace has returned. And one interesting factor he said, he said, we have the identity for both sides. As we know, all know that although Pakistan is trying to fence the border, which is the Durand line, but uh, people, you know, it's, it's still porous. So he said, we actually go to Afghanistan to, to do buy our daily needs. You know, it's cheaper in Afghanistan to buy them compared to Pakistan. So we know that economically, you know, where the Pakistani rupee is uh, uh, compared to the dollar, it's I think 300 plus something. Yeah, 300 plus. Yeah, Afghan currency is around 60. I don't know. I'm not checked lately, but around 60 something. Luxury between 60 and 65. 
the international community uh, as far as the international community is concerned uh, uh, post uh, president ghani's exit and uh, taliban taking over most of the foreign missions and the donors basically uh, left on of course the us had already planned it so they had already moved their uh, their diplomatic staff out of their embassy in kabul during the evacuation process and then uh, subsequently left after the evacuation was complete uh, and most uh, some uh, they uh, were able to operate their uh, their missions of course the us mission is coordinated with the qataris so the qataris qatar embassy in kabul is sort of the uh, is the us uh, sort of provides their uh, facilities to the us and of course the us's major engagements with the taliban is is conducted in as we all know in qatar where the peace talks happen uh, and uh, as far as iran uh, um, so the other issue is on the social side uh, uh, as we all know that taliban although promised that they will not uh, you know uh, go back to their taliban 1.0 Uh, norms on 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 social uh, social and civic uh, civil uh, civic rights but that has been a mixed bag and uh, and within the taliban uh, uh, the account zada the the amir is considered more uh, hard hard line and uh, although there is a sh- the shora but uh, but he is said to be still uh, there is a uh, uh, sort of a difference of opinion between him and the moderate group which includes so he under him has uh, his deputy is our uh, mulla brother who 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 conducted the he's uh, conducted the uh, talks with the us there is uh, sirajuddin lakani who is the interior minister there is uh, ulla umar san mulla yakub uh, who is uh, who is uh, the defense minister so these are the main uh, centers of power in kabul so they are more moderate uh, but uh, also you have to understand that kani uh, belongs to east of uh, eastern part of uh, afghanistan whereas uh, the kandhari so called which is the traditional base of the taliban where they originated mulla um, uh, yakub and mulla abdul uh, gani belong to to the kandhari base in fact before uh, mulla brother was arrested he was uh, the deputy uh, to mulla umar and uh, so there is still a, a sort of a negotiation it's not frozen in time but i hear different a lot of times from sources in kabul that uh, so there are two things they see that may happen i mean let's see hope for the best in march is because when the schools reopen that they may relax the restrictions on on uh, on women and girls as far as uh, pursuing secondary education and higher education and also in terms of employment although the taliban clamped down on the ngos as we have heard in, in end of 22 uh you know saying that women working there were not observing norms of uh, strict norms as far as uh, uh as laid down by the taliban is in, in in terms of their conduct and dressing but uh, then the as we know the which was reported then uh, women the uh, un and the ngos wound up their operations and uh, that was that stopped uh, deeply affected uh, the afghan uh, women and families and, and children so then it was uh, decided that by the taliban that women would be allowed to operate in the health and education area would work there so there it so sort of started but uh, so there is a constitution being drafted which will cover these issues uh, at present the taliban uses afghanistan uh, has two constitutions the 1964 constitution and the 2004 constitution post 9/11 uh the taliban follow most of the follow that except for areas where there's a contradiction with sharia so their sharia is predom- uh, predominant so 
it's a mix bag because they really don't have a, a, a constitution or a, a legal framework uh, which they follow in terms of uh, uh, general governance so it is still a little okay. ad hoc right uh, as far as the uh, as i we talked about the drugs already uh, and the other issues is in the region uh, uh, as you know afghanistan has uh, uh, has had uh, uh, meetings with different countries before their uh, signing of the accord in uh, in doha in both china and russia okay uh, so russia as we saw lavrov's recent statements uh, uh, in the uh, in the media that is still talking about an inclusive government but i would want to clarify here you know the what inclusive meant when the taliban was in doha before august 15th is different what inclusive means today you know people still think that the old uh, warlords and the old what's what we call afghan kabul elite or the afghan elite uh, is being talked about and that that they return it's not so you know it is that you will allow uh, you know a moderate form where you will allow more representation to uh, the uh, minorities which is the shias uh, and you know uh, so you will accommodate them and allow them more representation when we say inclusive government doesn't mean that it will, there is a deal or there is any hope of you know the old uh, uh uh so called uh, political elite or warlords coming back into any political process that i feel has because there is no leave they have no leverage and uh, also as far as when we are talking about that the resistance which we see we saw uh the reason which sort of tried to hold out was the nrf which is the Na- national resistance force uh which is primarily uh, Ahmed Shah Masood's son Ahmed Masood trying to uh, gather uh, uh, people up in the Panjshir valley which is north of kabul but that has uh, you know is 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 i don't think it will achieve any real purpose or right now of course we see on social media there is an afghan there are some afghan freedom front etc trying to garner support in the west but as we see um, the uh, statement a few months ago by the us charge the affairs for afghanistan she categorically says that america has no uh, no appetite for any resistance so the us has basically accepted the taliban uh, the iran has also uh, accepted them and when we talking about iran uh, it's very interesting that uh, recently we saw what happened with the with the attack in kemran and then the consequent actions taken by iran to uh, which was one of the largest attacks in in a long time at the anniversary of uh, uh, general sulaimani at his fourth uh, anniversary uh, is that uh, we saw the action which i think is coordinated you know although it, there is posturing between it, uh, afghanistan and pakistan sorry between pakistan and uh, and iran uh, uh, because I, i see they will doubt or it will not reach to any escalation but interestingly one of the characters which has been which is uh, has been implicated in those attacks is belongs to uh, came, was released from a prison in afghanistan uh, when the taliban took over they released all the prisoners few thousand prisoners from uh, prisons in kabul so he was he was he had already been implicated in a attack in um, he uh, he had allegiance to the IS, iskp and he had um, was involved in an attack on the kabul university and uh, he was he was supposed to be hung to death by by supreme court ruling in 2017 and he has their last reports are they are looking for him in western tehran so but there has been no if you look at it it's, it is uh, it's interesting that uh, there has been this acrimony and this shooting of missiles at each other in in, in baluchistan area between pakistan and iran 
but no such action has been conducted so that tells you that the especially the security and intelligence setup between uh, afghanistan and uh, iran are coordinating very closely and uh, also another thing i would like to cover here is that uh, post the uh, the uh, october 7th action by uh, hamas in gaza there was a report in november that um, the uh, uh, there were some uh, as, uh, israeli agents which were arrested in afghanistan trying to plan an attack on iran uh, this was around 5th of november around a month after october 7th so that is uh, to be watched as far as afghanistan is concerned because afghanistan has about 20 odd terrorist groups okay and when we talk you know their ideology the common ideology which binds them is to enforce sharia and they are basically targeting right from the ugur uh, china's ugur area and uh, uh, uzbekistan tajikistan and uh, uh, and uzbekistan not turkmenistan and uh, partly uh, but then you have the TDP, which is very majorly, as we all know, is in TDP, which was formed in 2007, uh, uh, to uh, which basically the objective is to have Sharia all over Pakistan and to uh, free the 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 uh, which is now combined to KPK, but erstwhile FATA and uh, what we know as Northern uh, uh, Northwestern Frontier Province, which was uh, yeah, by an amendment in Pakistan, renamed as KPK uh, in 2000, I think if I'm not uh, wrong, around 2010. In 2018, FATA and KPK was, uh, basically FATA was combined with KPK. And, and there was also, because this area has 25% uh, Shia population, interestingly, Azaras basically. So they took a little bit of a offense to this because not a little, but a lot because using a Pakhtun name was, you know, was, did not sort of uh, sort of uh, give a true representation to their identity. Besides this, that as far as terrorists are concerned, uh, uh, ISKP is, I think, as far as India's security concerns is, besides the usual suspects which are still operating in Afghanistan is. Jeshua Mohammed and L.E.T. is the ISKP. As we know, in uh, 20, if I'm wrong, wrong, in 22, there were attacks in Coimbatore and uh, I think Mangalore, which were not successful. And then they were uh, actually uh, the uh, ISKP took credit for those attacks after a few months in 23, early 23. So, uh, and they are trying to recruit people from the uh, organizations which have been banned in India, like the People's Front, etc. So that India needs to watch very carefully, and uh, especially in the, in the south of India. Uh, as far as China is concerned, uh, China basically is making a lot of noise, I say, but. Uh, I doubt that the U.S. will allow it to have a free ride in Afghanistan, and uh, because they're already facing problems, and ISKP, as we know, is, is targeting them also. They are already facing problems with CPEC, so they will make a lot of expected noise and show their presence. Uh, I recently heard from reliable sources that the Chinese ambassador in, in Kabul is trying to. Uh, 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 I, compared to India, China has a major presence and is as a, as a, a senior uh, diplomat there. India has a low diplomatic, uh, a junior diplomatic arrangement. So India, I don't know, needs to take a call on that. But uh, they are also telling the Taliban that they would, you know, uh, not only build infrastructure, but uh, develop and invest in, which is the huge mining potential, especially lithium in Afghanistan. Uh, which we heard stories, and at that time when the U.S. was there, the the uh, estimated wealth of minerals was uh, uh, about anywhere three to four trillion dollars. 
but lithium is has been discovered there and is is a source uh, as we know there is a big fight over rare earths today all over the world with with the whole uh, uh, you know a focus on electric uh, electric vehicles and equipment so uh, that is a very critical source uh, or a resource uh, besides that uh, the u china is there are different reports trying uh, to build a, a road in the northeast where it it has a small border with uh, with afghanistan uh, near the wakhan corridor so the different reports some say that they have done the basic survey some say that they have started uh, construction so that is very important for china but like i said uh, china it is yet to be seen how china will secure its uh, investments in afghanistan another factor which is different from this time is is different this time is earlier the chinese labor was allowed to come to afghanistan the afghans although have uh, the taliban although have allowed uh, chinese uh, uh, investments and uh, and operations but they do not allow chinese labor to uh, to operate in afghanistan you know so except for the skilled skilled labor or higher higher workers uh, i think we uh, No, no. You want me to go on now? No. Okay. Let me. I'll lead you on to a few questions so that you know. Yeah. Let, uh, yeah. let me. Okay. Let me ask you the first question. I think you covered a large footprint of Afghanistan to give a true picture. Wow. What is happening? Important mm-hmm. thing which you said. Let me to recapitulate. Is mm-hmm. it's peaceful? You know, everyone thought Afghanistan will descend into chaos, but you said it's peaceful. That's a great good thing, right? the drug and donation economy has turned into some extent though afghanistan is still aid dependent and it, it is food insecure probably that is the next stage right uh, the taliban have been able to get more peace and security into the area which is again very uh, sur- uh, uh, surprising and an important point which you have made is that the us is still firmly in the saddle without us support probably the taliban won't survive that is something which many of us are still missing the point right and us is the one which is probably supporting the uh, finance of the whole system what you said is important that the afghani is stronger than the uh, pakistani currency as you are speaking i did a check uh, one us dollar gets you 71 point or 72 afghanis and 1 us dollar gets you 279 pakistani rupees a little short of 300 in a sense the differential is one afghani gets you 3.5 pakistani rupees which is huge so pakistani has gone down pakistan has gone down and afghanistan has gone up in the overall sense and if you see today pakistan is uh, not as peaceful as afghanistan right right now the uh, the question which i want you to answer and i'll ask you a few questions and lead you on to it and i'll pick your uh, you know thing has afghanistan changed for the better for its people it's so it, very it depends on who who you are addressing you know see uh, of course you uh, people like freedom people like uh, to be progressive people do not like social uh, you know uh, sort of to operate in a social hard rule another thing which i'll cover on this is besides the clamping down on the rights and women uh, most of the media organizations there are strict uh, rules for media to because when i went to kabul in 2002 there was hardly any media print or otherwise uh, uh, the us made a major effort in establishing one of them is tulu which is still operating uh, by yeah, us tulu is still operating Sad Musini is a friend who started up Tulu. He was called the Rupert Murdoch of Afghanistan. In fact, okay. Rupert Murdoch, uh, Rupert Murdoch made an investment there. He was he came from Australia. He was he was not a media per, uh, person. He was a, basically an investment banker like I am uh, by training. So uh, uh, it basically they have clamped down on strict code on. Uh, I I saw the same thing in Tehran. You know, I was in Tehran. a few years ago and i this there was a small group of people playing music and there uh, you know whatever cid or police came uh, this is inside tehran in a park you know and they quickly you know 
caught them and took them away. So there are rules which are enforced. But like I said, uh, it is a process of growing. I don't think the Taliban, with the way the world is today, uh, and with a large younger population who's who's connected, you know, they have not shut down on media and you can still make a WhatsApp call to Kabul and whatever. It may be monitored, but that, that aside. Uh, is that they will not be able to enforce this for a long time. They will have to gradually release this you know, the, on the social issues, you know, uh, gradually moderate them. So th that is one. I'm talking about people who remain. So when you, your question fundamentally is addressing two populations, people remaining in Afghanistan versus people who fled Afghanistan. Okay, people remaining in Afghanistan are, most of them uh, did not have the option to leave. Okay. Some of them did not want to leave because if you look at the whole, I will talk of Afghanistan in the recent past, means uh, post 9-11. See, the, most of the American aid, etc., uh, went into big cities and uh, went, it did not reach the grassroots levels, you know, to the large extent. And even infrastructure was built, mainly concentrated in certain areas. It was not uh, that far and wide. So uh, a, a life of a farmer in Afghanistan actually is better now in that context. Okay. Because the state was not providing him any uh, services. And that's the gap which Taliban went in. So there was a statistic done by Taliban of their popularity. This is very interesting. During Karzai's time. And uh, their their uh, sort of support for Taliban was much high. But in Ghani's government, it sort of lowered because the violence naturally was going up. So, you know, they were suffering. But now as peace has returned, so, and I'm not saying, again, I'm not taking any sides, but objectively. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah. So, so, most of, so the, most it's, of, it's a mixed bag, but definitely it has not gone worse. That's what you would put. put yeah. So, so, I'll, I'll, so, so the pluses are that you have peace. The minus is you, you have economic hardship. The second yeah. minus okay. is that you have uh, 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 economic hardship. Plus, you have restrictions, especially for women and uh, girls, on okay. See, social issues. I, I get the point. But it is not so bad as with everyone was led to believe that no. it will go bad. So you so mentioned bad. about the civil war. I'll just add one line there. I, yeah. uh, I, you know, See, actually, the Taliban emerged because of civil war. If you go into the history of Afghanistan, yeah. when the Russians left, 92, because Gulbak, Akhmetyar, and Rabani, and the likes of them were could not get up a cohesive uh, government in place. So that gave scope for a Taliban to emerge. And when I when I set up shop in Kabul, so I asked the, the I had very young employees. So I asked them who lived through the, all you know all the phases of Afghanistan, and I asked them of, to compare. So they the one thing they used to always say whatever the Taliban were, it was a peaceful period for us. You know we were not in a state of war. So okay, that that's is, a very important a, uh, way of thinking. Yeah, I, I go with it. The second question I have for you is, you see, when the Americans were withdrawing away from uh, you know, Afghanistan, there was a lot of talk that China will step in in a big way. China will fund. It's a vacuum. Pakistan and China will all virtually you know run Afghanistan, and China will invest heavily and take away all the minerals. And you'll see a changed security architecture in this region. So I, I was skeptical about it even then. And I remain skeptical about it even now, like you rightly said. The fundamental reason is that if for 20 years, USA was staying in Afghanistan and it knew that lithium was there, it knew copper was there, it knew all the minerals were there, it didn't take out one kg out of all this. It Neither did it start any operation there. So do you think in this kind of a story, China can do anything great? Though you have touched upon it, do you think they no, can? So I think China it? will will posture, like I say, and be there and try posture. to. Yeah, no, but they are they are on the ground. So let's understand. They are at different levels. It's like I'll compare it. Like I go to Nepal, you know. They are there. They are competing it's in a way. You know, there are three people competing okay. in Nepal, India, US and China, right? But Chinese uh, diplomatic engagement is on a much higher level. So you cannot just okay. you know, set them Wish aside. But you're right in terms of implementing projects, how successful they'll be or how fast that will grow is I'm very skeptical about that for various reasons. Okay. Then China has one 
this fear that you know islamic terrorism or islamism or islamic fundamentalism will spread into xinjiang uh, right. is there any that is, sense you that have is a major a... reason major reason they are there because i read reports that they asked the taliban to basically move uh, so you know on the terrorism issue another thing so i was speaking to some insiders and in, uh, you know interlocutor the taliban on what is the position on different terrorist groups and their simple thing is that these people have have basically fought alongside us so we will not support them going out but we will not uh, you know openly go to uh, you know sort of act against them okay so they that's a they fair basically one. yeah that's a fair so, one right China basically and, uh, is opinion, it's the elements which are uh, you know sort of anti the uyghur elements they basically have closer eyes on them and uh, you know to whatever extent contain the action but i don't think they can completely eradicate them from afghanistan okay now how do you see this relationship between afghanistan ttp and pakistan go as you look at it ahead so ttp is is not going to stop i don't see that afghanistan now another point i didn't pick up so with this uh, afghan refugee situation okay yeah uh, the afghans as we know there a few hundred thousand afghans have been pushed back and as read reports that uh, uh, the pakistanis have confiscated uh, uh, their number was 4 billion dollar worth of assets of afghans who yeah. they have pushed out plus the trade has stopped durkham is as i know stopped right now as we speak only one yeah, border borders are which is a huge because see pakistan afghanistan is a landlocked country and that's the opportunity for india to seriously act on chaba as another area which i think over on india's perspective one is the security on our trade with afghanistan and rest of central asia we have to seriously you know i have been to chaba thrice we because of the sanctions and other complications we we make a lot of noises but we have not cohesively implemented uh, you know things so we need to act there implement what we are saying there at a faster pace so that means at this point of time we need greater cooperation with iran because i don't think we can get through chabahar and through the no we already uh, have route. iran rather no, is no, telling no we have we need to step up the pace and yes. step up on the accelerator to do what we are supposed to do right 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 that's what i am trying to put across we need to uh, this, uh, get better with iran and uh, uh, you know pump in or trade to afghanistan and of course on to central asia through the chabahar road that is a given and uh, it's been lagging for the past 10 years on that also there's no doubt but i think it's a important thing overall you think that it's time for india to take a forward step with afghanistan and expand its relations yeah of course especially economic relations yeah i've been saying that in all and, my posts okay yeah i i think so too i mean we have to you know up, it doesn't matter what the color up, of the cat is as long as it uh, catches mice yeah the go ahead the battery of my uh, laptop is very low so i if you don't mind give me a second i'll you can go ahead i'll yeah. switch to the my yeah, phone go ahead, go ahead 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 no problem not an issue yeah so not an issue at all so they so the point which uh, samir was making is that afghanistan has changed afghanistan and taliban today are not the afghanistan and taliban which were there say two years back when the americans left A lot has changed certain things are still uh, going on they'll be the remnants and certain things have changed drastically and our ideas have also changed accordingly and that is why uh, uh, jalaluddin yeah yeah you can take this on because i don't want this yeah. to yeah. no no it's no fine no, yeah that's first class right no, that's just, why I... no problems don't worry that's no, why just... hakani son has been called as a envo you know uh, chief guest to the one minute one minute you let put your Yeah, one minute. Yeah, now just... you're okay. Yeah, now I'm okay. Okay, first class. We'll continue with this only. Yeah. So, yeah. the India is also changing its tracks, and that's something important to know. Now, I'll take a few few questions from the audience, uh, Samir. 
because there are a lot of yeah. questions and I think very important questions people have thrown up. You will find it interesting. One thing I can assure you, when you come on Gunner Short, the questions are very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, this is a very, this is an absolute bouncer, which Shruti Kothari has said. We've been successful in building a people-to-people -people connect and have a lot of goodwill in Afghanistan due to our aid and projects. What has gone right in Afghanistan that's gone wrong in Maldives? Both are Islamic. Can you take a shot at it? So I have had the privilege and opportunity of visiting Maldives as part of Indian Ocean Conference uh, okay. uh, before COVID. And uh, see, it's, it's, it's to a totally different context because Afghanistan is a much larger country and we have historical, as you touched on the peoples to peoples ties, we have historic ties and especially with the Pashtuns. Although in our foreign policy, we, we sort of uh, deviated a bit or giving focus, uh, you know, losing focus with the Pashtuns and increasing our thing with the Northern Alliance. And the religious factor doesn't work. Uh, Maldives is, is, is a very different uh, cup of tea, you know, Maldives, when I was there in 2019, even the erstwhile president admitted that their own, uh, uh, besides the Chinese influence, their own uh, uh, government has been sort of influenced by uh, uh, a more radical ideology and, uh, you know, elements of Al-Qaeda and ISIS creeping in. So it's a smaller country and, you know, it's um, uh, because you have to also understand the, the in that context, you know, Maldives is basically a bunch of, I think, 1500 islands with resorts uh, and a small uh, town. Your voice is not coming. It's not way, way deeper and longer historically compared to Maldives. Yeah. So that is fine. My... Okay. Right. So the next question from Vidita Gule. Uh, I'm just curious as to in the present day, what is Taliban's vision of their country? Right. When boys grow up with guns as toys and all you know is fight. The other side, life skills are legitimate in Sharia. Okay, I I would say what is Taliban's vision of their country is a larger question. Go so ahead. like I said, there is no war now. So there, you know, we have to understand. Uh, war also works like everything in life on demand and supply, you know. So uh, there is no real fight there. So there is, there is no employment earlier. In fact, they have to rehabilitate 60,000 Afghan Taliban who were already fighting all through. So there is no future in, you know, okay, Afghan is militant by nature. So everyone has a gun, which is a cultural issue. But besides that, and like I said earlier, today everyone is connected on a phone. Today everyone, okay, take the example of the Afghan cricket team. You know, they still are under the old banner, which was, uh, you know, they are now competing at the world stage. You know, that is the Afghan youth. So today the Afghan youth are cheering for them. You know, the, this is a very classic example. Afghan Taliban have not shut down the afghan uh, afghan cricket team and they continue to support it although india has supported that level so that is the you know uh, that is what uh, the aspiration of an afghan child if you understand during 20 years most of the youth there born were you know to anyone who's 20 years old was born after 9 11 that means somewhat means in their 20s and 30s that is a major portion of afghanistan who saw a liberalized country who were exposed to the west Okay, and continue to be extend to some extent. So you cannot change them suddenly and you know make them where uh, 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 you know they may do it out of coercion, but you cannot make them accept that uh, you know as their future. So there yes, definitely sir. there will be pressure on Taliban to uh, mod uh, you know sort of be more moderate on their uh, you know on their population, especially the youth, in terms of the social conduct. Fair enough. Okay. He says, Samir looks like an interesting game of chess. Would it be reasonable to ask who are the players there? I mean, so Akash is actually. Taliban is a big, yeah, is is actually, a big player. No, Akash is actually a class fellow of mine from DPS RK Puram. So. <laughs> How nice. <laughs> so you can have it all of me between the two of no, you. No, so coming back, the predominant player. In, will be Taliban uh, supported, like I said, with the US with a working arrangement with the rest of the powers, right? 
and uh, they will not support any proxy uh, at least try not to as far as any proxy uh, wars in within afghanistan so they will remain in power for the foreseeable future and uh, basically like i said all, besides the uh, social issues the country is by large at peace people are suffering economically but slowly when the chinese engage the americans are coming and i hear world bank is supposed to reopen its offices so there may not be a, 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 a complete recognition any time soon but the uh, it is prog- it is still progressing as far as the economic uh, on the economic issues the world is engaging with the taliban and moving forward yeah uh okay wait let me wait one minute okay there's another question right what is bharat's take on utility of afghanistan in tackling pakistan and security friendly relations it's well known but i think you might as well put it across to them what is whose uh, india's bharat's take india see bharat yeah. bharat uh, it's sad violence I, i never say that violence is a good thing which should happen but pakistan has enough on its plate to handle bharat basically needs to just uh, you know uh, at the moment you know not intervene they need to keep their economic ag- agenda uh, move on the economic agenda and politically engage with the taliban at a certain level but as far as pakistan is concerned see india's major concern in afghanistan was security as we all know which was both uh, you know security as we know it and energy security so our engagement in the region is on we have not been ousted our mission there is open so you know pakistan influence as we know is uh, is is not an, anywhere close as as we expected so i don't think we need to worry as far as that is concerned okay adil has a very straight forward question can you explain the di- dispute between iran and afghanistan at baksh abad dam at baksh abad dam uh, if not familiar so, with it we'll take it apart no no i i know i mean no so see yeah. as you know that the bordering areas of iran have uh, scarcity of water in fact when we, india built the salma dam even iran was uh, you know sort of uh, had shown uh, resistance to that and in which that, uh, that's a bigger game where qatar is also involved so um, uh, uh, any dams on that border actually lead to uh, further uh, 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 restricting the flow of water to the iranian side so that is besides drugs which was uh, an issue previously which is now contained water is a contentious issue as far as uh, iran afghanistan and iran is concerned yeah first class then uh, what is the territorial goal of taliban regime for pashtun area east of durand line till attack you know this is, has something this is with the connection with the tit so this is interesting you know even if if like i i said it in my talk that uh, uh, pakistan interestingly has recognized that and has gone ahead to appease the pashtuns and you know in 2010 they renamed uh, the northwestern frontier province which was called that from the time of the british yeah. to to khyber pakhtunkhwa and now they even uh, merged the fata area in 2018 into khyber pakhtunkhwa so they are recognizing the pakhtun identity and that is a simmering issue not only from the taliban side you understand you cannot you have to also because there are larger portion of pashtuns living on the pakistani side and uh, that will continue to simmer and let's see how that is uh, that goes you know but that uh, you know that is a major issue for pakistan uh i think uh, you you covered a whole track and we uh, shot over a little thing but i mm. yeah the way you handle the questions also good uh i must thank you this is the last no, question i was take, take right you for mm. the kind the canvas you covered you know from the ground it was great and i've learned uh, quite a bit from what you have spoken today samir and i'm sure the way you handle the questions uh, audience also would have understood and understood part afghanistan better and for the audience i will say you heard one uh, approach to afghanistan from samir 
four days back, five days back, you heard another approach, you know, to Afghanistan from Anant, Anant Mishra. You put these two together and you'll get the larger picture, right? And like I keep saying always, the larger picture is more important. We are looking at an Afghanistan which has changed drastically from the past two and a half years and it is going to change further. We are looking at an Afghanistan which we have to start re-engaging in a greater manner and go there with purpose. We have to start looking at going deeper and putting you know, where uh, our money is into Iran and Chabahar and make it operational. Otherwise, we are at risk. Because like what Samir said, for the past 10 years, I've also been hearing about Chabahar. It has not been operationalized. It has not come up of age. Unless you have this corridor, right? And, uh, you know, you operate that Zaranj Dalaram road in the north of Afghanistan, you will get nowhere. And that is what your ace is. And that was what was the discussion long back. And this discussion, I go back to the time. You know, actually, one of my friends constructed the Zaranj Dalaram road. Uh, Brigadier NRK Babu at those days from the engineers. So we have a lot of stake and we have a lot to do also. Uh, we'll keep discussing because what has happened after the Iran and Pakistan, you know, spat is that this region has got added significance. And you'll all realize that Pakistan has always fought losing wars, even if they're small wars. After every war which Pakistan has fought, it has taken a nose dive. And this was the first time Pakistan has got involved with a cross-border exchange of fire of any kind with without India. For the first time, it has gone into Iran, formally with aircraft and all that. It has got to have a lot of significance about which we will talk tomorrow. So till tomorrow, thanks to all of you who attended and thanks to Samir for coming and giving his knowledge about Afghanistan. Good evening and Jai Hind to all of you. Jai Hind, sir. Thanks a lot for this opportunity. Oh, welcome. It was great. Thanks, sir.